I'm recording this on the first day after what's called Trinity Sunday in the church's year, the start of the season of Trinity, which follows Pentecost. Today's hymn is by Johann Scheffler. I recorded one of his hymns a few weeks ago, which, like this one, was translated by John Wesley. John Wesley heard these hymns sung by the Moravians in German as they crossed the Atlantic uh, to America, and he learned German so that he could both sing the hymns and translate them. And uh, this is a, a wonderful translation. One of the interesting things about both uh, Charles and John was that they were steeped in classical education and in uh, the great English poets. And so Charles in his hymns includes phrases, words, even sentences that uh, he borrowed from uh, the classics or from poets. And John did the same in his translations. So he didn't always do an exact translation of the German where he found a, a phrase or a thought that he could express from poetry or from the classics. He would insert that in instead of the German writer's words or lines, as long as it fitted the theme. And that makes me feel a wee bit better whenever I uh, replace some of the words or phrases, uh, as I've done in a number of the hymns, to uh, update them and make them a wee bit more usable uh, for modern worship and modern worshippers. And that's what I've done in this hymn. Uh, this is, O God of good, the unfathomed sea, and it's difficult to find it, in uh, hymn books, I found it in uh, a very old Methodist hymn book that I have. Uh, but of course, you can find these online now and download them. But when you do, you'll find the words that I'm singing today are a bit different. We've been saying that the first work of the Holy Spirit being poured out on the day of Pentecost was illumination. And of course, this was his ministry throughout the Old Testament period as well. But at Pentecost, it was like a, a blazing light, uh, almost overwhelming light of revelation that was being poured out both on the disciples and on their hearers. And part of that illumination was something that was present in the Old Testament, but now came into full understanding and uh, into fullness of light. And that was that God is three persons. And the Jews, of course, were used in their daily prayers to make the great Jewish confession from Deuteronomy. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God, the one, with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And now on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was revealing that this one God was three persons, eternal Father, eternal Son, eternal spirit and just imagine what it was like for uh, for the hearers for 3,000 people who were baptized that day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit which is how Jesus taught the disciples to baptize would be coming to terms with this completely new revelation of how God was to be worshipped worshipped not only as one God but worshipped in three persons. And uh, John Owen has a wonderful book on this. It's available under the banner Truth in a Modern Translation, where he unfolds the opportunity, the potential we have through the Holy Spirit of having communion and fellowship with each of the three persons of the Godhead, fellowship with Father, Son, and Spirit. And this is a privilege that so few Christians really take advantage of. Scheffler has done a wonderful job in this hymn. He's so constructed it really beautifully. And uh, he, in this hymn, emphasizes the fact that Jesus is Lord and God, co-equal with God. And the first verse is an example of that. He begins, O God of good, the unfathomed sea, who not to you devoted be, who would not love you with his might. And the second half is saying, O Jesus, who would not his whole soul and mind with all his strength to you unite? In other words, he's saying, Jesus is the one 
He is the Lord who is to be loved with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. And so in each verse, the first three lines are his deity and the next three lines are his humanity and his humility. O oh God of good, the unfathomed sea, who not to you devoted be, who would not love you with his mind. O oh Jesus, lover of mankind, who would not his whole soul bind with all his strength to you. With all his strength to you. 